Blake Mungo. Oh shit. Welcome back to the Monolith Film Podcast. It's a club over here. The Monolith Monolith Film Club. club. It's true. Uh, uh, Enjoy the club. uh, uh, Whatever we call it. Uh, Today we're doing Lake Mungo. mm -hmm. So I pitched this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's on a lot of lists on the internet. Oh, it's got a really good review rating. Yeah. As it's it's hailed as being one of the uh, scariest movies ever made. Mm. Really? I've I've never heard of it before you mentioned it. Yeah, I, I never yeah. heard of it either. I, I hadn't heard about it. It's pretty new though now. A few oh, years. 2008. Eight? Really? I think, yeah. I thought it was like two years ago. No, oh, 2008. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. And um, it's a found footage mockumentary. Yeah. Horror film. Yeah. I kind of like, don't like the mockumentary title, though. Really? I don't know. It's like... I, I, I like the... Yeah, I like documentary style. Yeah, it's got the wrong sure. connotation with sure. mockumentary. I mean, I see a lot of people call it just a faux documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, like you said, Dante. Documentary, documentary, style. documentary style. I don't yeah. think mockumentary has any connotations. I, I always think... Like, that more I'm thinking, like, Spinal Tap or something, you know? With yeah, yeah, or like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, shout out Spinal Tap. Greatest, greatest mockumentary of all time. I personally love... The format, fake works documentaries, really well. yeah, found really footage, well. mm-hmm. I fucking love. Mm-hmm. I mean, District 9 is one of my favorite movies of all time. Well, I don't know if we could call it found footage, though. D- District 9? Yeah. Or this one? Either. No, found, uh, District 9. Yeah, no, that's just a straight... That's a straight movie with, like... Oh, document, but it's doc- It's still documentary style. Mm-hmm. Um, Most of Herzog's, too, were documentary style. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's uh, no sit-down in Shout out District yeah. 9... Top five sci-fi all time. Needle Blom Camp. Oh yeah, for sure. Really? Eh? Top three oh, yeah. almost. Top That's three one almost. of your favorites. I agree. Though, oh, yeah. one of my favorites. Top, of all top time. three almost. I think oh, it's two thousand one yeah. Blade Runner and then District Nine. And I, Neil Blomkamp yeah. hasn't done anything good since. What did he do? Patchy or whatever. That Chappie. Was Chappie. Yeah. Yeah. He did Chappie. He did Elysium. I think was him. Yeah. I like the first like twenty minutes of Elysium. Oh yeah. First twenty. And like then Neil Blomkamp years. did. He he started Oats Studios where he made a bunch of shorts and he tried making a video game and nothing really worked out. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's on. They're all for free on YouTube and Netflix. Netflix the game come out? I don't know. That's, I think that fell through. Okay. His shorts are okay. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Love, Death, and Robots style, but not animated. Yeah, I think I might have seen some of his shorts. They're okay. But yeah, Lake Mungo. I think I might have. Lake Mungo. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hell House LLC mm. was, it is my favorite fake horror documentary. The whole series oh, okay. yeah, is yeah. so fucking good. Oh, yeah. So so this is why Lake Mungo interested me because apparently it's it's supposed to be scarier and it was a, mm-hmm. the same style so I was very interested. Well, I was kind of telling you before the podcast. Uh, I watched the movie last night. And I got a little. I also watched up, it. You know, so I was like, I'm not gonna. So so I was uh, to add to that. Yeah. Very rarely do I get like zipped up like that for a movie. Okay. This one zipped me up pretty good. Oh, I think you guys are talking I, about different yeah, zippers. Yeah, I'm talking different zip here. Oh, okay, no. I'm talking, I was feeling pretty good when I was watching the movie. I, I was feeling good, but also there was a couple moments where I was like, that was done so well, it's getting shot at me. Well, that first five minutes, like the intro, just me oh, sitting there open, yeah, yeah. in the dark watching this movie, yeah. I was scared as hell, dude. I was going, <laughs> looking back and forth. I didn't know what the me, fuck me was going on. There was a particular on. moment for me, but we'll get into it. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. scary. The beginning was scary. The, like, you mean, like, the, the black and white, the old school photography stuff? Yeah, and, and like, the music. starting, yeah. the first start of it, it yeah. got me in, like, a, a spooky mood. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Lake Mungo, 2008, directed by Joel Anderson. Mm-hmm. It's a documentary about a young girl, Alice, who, while swimming with her family in Queensland, Australia? Or is it... Uh, Ar- Ar- Aratat. 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 Ararat? Ararat. 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 Uh, she goes missing and they find her body a few days later in the in near the dam in the lake she drowned mm, yeah. presumably and then um, the family starts seeing experiencing ghosts paranormal stuff <laughs> they can't let go and then the ghosts you find out later end up being faked by by the sun yeah but then plot twist there's someone else in the footage that wasn't faked and then there's a yeah. couple more plot twists yeah. It was maybe a little too many twists at the end. Like, halfway through, I was sold. And then once it was like, is they're finding all these ghosts yeah. and the photographs that the son is taking. Yeah. Once it was revealed, kind of, that it's like, oh, he's fucking with the police, dressing like his sister or something. Then I was kind of like, oh, okay, whatever, fuck this fucking movie. I mean, you know, I don't know. Well, the, the thing is, there, for me, Julia. Welcome, Julia. For yeah. me, there's, there's two particular moments in the movie that are the only two actual superman- supernatural paranormal moments. Mm. The beginning when the dad talks about how he saw Alice in her room. Yeah. 
and like kind of locked a gaze with her. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the and the part where like the mom, not the mom, where the um, when they're at Lake Mungo, where they're at Lake Mungo. Well, they see the footage on her phone. Right. Okay. So and it like zooms in, and the, and she sees her own ghost. Yeah. For me, those are the only two actual pieces of paranoia in the movie. Which I yeah. like mm-hmm. because I find a lot of par- this is okay. So th- this is the type of movie. Th- why I like so much about this movie is that it plays out like a typical haunting kind of death paranoia like grieving movie. Mm-hmm. But they undermine these kind of paranormal activities that happen in the movie, which I like, I don't want to say it's a commentary on all these other movies there, but like I feel like all these other movies kind of follow, follow a formula that yeah. this movie does. It was different. But me. then they like underscore it by saying, "Oh, this didn't actually happen. Like the kid was fucking with them and stuff mm-hmm. like that." Yeah. You know. Um, what was I gonna say? We'll continue. Why do I? Because I found that same bit where the dad sees the sees Alice in the room. I thought that was more like a mirror of what the mom saw also because she, she sure. has the same story in her dream. She's the when, they're, when they consult the psychic, yeah. Yeah, yeah Ray. Yeah. So I don't know. I was kind of thinking like the dad also, he mistook what he saw for a dream like the mom was He could have, that, but that, that, that one's more a bit more like subjective, right? Yeah. I find the ending one on the phone footage is not subjective, you know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I like, I also like after that what you were saying, when mm-hmm. the, at the very end of the movie, when they show the back and forth, Ray's footage yeah. of the, the seance with the mother and the yes, seance with the daughter, true. Yes. where they're both, even though the they're years mother's apart. seance is in the present and the daughter's seance is in the past, it's before she died, mm. they're like through the seance their astral projections are interacting with each other yes. at different moments in time it was a very interstellar moment you know that was cool yeah I like yeah, that I like that a lot yeah. I like that element and, and what was like you know oh there's so much to talk about in this movie and what's so good about that too is that when they leave the house finally move out there's a picture and she's in the background in the window yeah I saw someone's review I'll read it later I think I liked it on Letterboxd maybe I didn't though so maybe I won't read it mm-hmm. but I didn't go back and look at that image but apparently there's more than just her Oh yeah, that image. There's other ghosts too. Really? Oh really? Like it's, it's like a uh, yeah. And what I, what I like so much about this movie is that it doesn't try to explain what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't try to explain the the paranormal or the lore of it, which I like so much. Me yeah. too. Don't explain it. I think it's just the str- I think it's the strongest it. part about this yeah. movie. You know, yeah. that it's more normal. It's more like you know, it's 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 kind of telling us that like it's possible to have these ghostly experiences and not have an explanation for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be a lore. Oh, yeah. I like what you said before. Um, sorry, I just forgot what we were talking about. Um, oh, never mind. I'll come back to it. I forgot now. Fuck. Very Give interesting. Give me two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that is also one of the paranormal parts of the movie. That's like actual paranormal. Is that mm-hmm. ending, the very end, yeah. where you see the picture and she's still in the window. You did know? you guys watch mm-hmm. the credits? I did not. Yeah. Oh, really? Dude, oh. you missed the best part. Oh, what? No way. Intercut with the credits, they show all the images and all the footage that was doctored by the sun. Yeah. And in a different section of the background, you see the real ghost of Alice. Mm-hmm. She was there the whole time. Well, that see, that's what the ending kind of told me was that she was there to actually yeah. the whole time. And like, I went back and scrubbed through the movie to mm-hmm. go look at those images because, like, did they add that later? Like, was that actually she was there? actually there? That, like when, the, especially the the backyard shot, shot mm-hmm. where she's leaning against the fence. If you look at it, even in the beginning. In the right corner of the picture, she's sitting on a bench. That's so good. That's yeah. so good. <laughs> it's pretty cool. The, the so credits. The, that was that was a cool. Uh, that's that's cool. Answer. That's cool addition. Yeah. But like that's what kind of what the ending of the movie told me is that yeah. like, she's actually was there the whole time. Mm. Might not have interacted with them as much as we thought she did. But at the end, they're like, oh, after they consoled Ray and they saw the fat and went to like Mundo, they felt like a mm. sense of they felt consoled, they felt solace, yeah. you know. Their yeah. lives were getting better, and they felt like kind of they're getting on with their lives and kind of like getting over it a bit. Mm-hmm. They were, but it was like false almost because she was actually still there the whole time. You yeah, know? I remember what I was gonna say before where yeah. you, you were talking about like kind of breaking the formula a bit, where yeah. it's different than what you kind of expect. From yeah, like a ghost kind of movie, and like I found the same thing with just horror in general. Kind of a lot of the time, it's more like atmospheric and like less talking more like mm-hmm. brooding kind of thing people kind of looking around not you know yeah. this is different because it's wall to wall talking yeah so it kind of takes you out of the the, the horror normal thing and it's it, nor- cool. it, it, it's it, I, think, I think that's what makes it so scary is that yeah, it's exactly. so, it feels so normal watching this mm-hmm. 
But there's these scary, there's a scary undertone to it, you know? When the ghost pops up, you're going, what the fuck? I wasn't expecting. And there's not, there's not much the jump scares, you know? There's one, no. There's kind of. One. Yeah. The one. And yeah. I don't even find it that bad. You know, I, I was kind of scared ex- for a minute. They kind scared. of zoom in, and I was kind of expecting it to yeah. happen, you know? And yeah, but you, th- that's the thing. You are expecting it, but then they pause. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they hit you with it. Yeah. So even though you're expecting it, it's still, they still get you. I was scared by it. I, and, and, and for me, this, oh, they got me. That's like one yeah. of the only jump scares. The, the, this that is like a, yeah. and also, this is a slow burn of a fucking movie, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I wish, like, the arc of it kept going a bit, though. Like, I wish the burn kept going until the end, almost. I didn't like the resolution. I think oh, it. Yeah. I thought it did. I, put the, I thought the the the, uh, the burn went all the way till we see the phone footage and the ghost kind of slowly yeah, coming. Yeah, pretty much. But there's still like 15, 20 minutes after that. Yeah, there is. But that's like the conclusion. You know? Yeah. Oh. So if that could almost be gone, then yeah. you're left kind of on a cliff, going, "What the fuck?" Yeah. They could have. I mean, they could have just edited it so that without showing us why they choose to move out of the house after Lake Mungo. They show us them leaving the house after Lake Mungo and everything, and they kind of yeah. end with the... Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. I didn't, that didn't bother me. I found... I actually, I actually quite liked how it ended, though. I yeah. thought it was perfect. Yeah. I thought it more had, like, a middle arc where, like, you know, 45 minutes into the 90 minutes was the peak and the rest was down after. I felt like everything right. after... It kind of it it had a, there. a double... Because it's like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Oh, the sun faked it all. Yeah. And then we dip again, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, wait. Okay, now we're going to, like, Mungo. Yeah, Despite what, what, the faking, there actually is something deeper going on here. Yeah, yeah like, once the sun kind of story finishes, yeah. that, I found, was the peak of the movie. Yeah. Really? And then all the twists and everything after I found... For it, like, me, it was, like, Mungo. Was that was, like, the peak for me. It was spookier, but it was still, I found, like... You know, you can't scare someone so much, or you can't like cry wolf so many times. There yeah, were so sure, many sure. of these like the same thing. Oh, and there was yeah. another angle of the camera, and we saw this. It was kind of like, okay, yeah, far can we kind of? Yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I really like this movie, boys. It was a good movie. I fucking, yeah, I fucking movie. loved this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. The the mu- I thought the music was so good too. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. fucking good. Yeah. And I liked it for all the reasons we just said. You know, it kind of undermines the thing. Yeah. And I think it just did it so well. Mm-hmm. And because like so, the part that scared me the most was was that was the fo- was the phone footage where the things coming closer. Yeah. yeah. And and then I'm like, okay, what is that? And it's very slow burn. It's like thirty seconds of this thing fucking coming to the camera, right? Mm. And it gets a bit closer, and I'm like, okay, it's 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 Alice on the phone. Then I see it's Alice's, and then when I saw the, the the actual face, I was like, oh, it's Alice's dead body. You knew it was her dead body when you saw it. When I saw the face, I was like, yeah, I yeah. knew exactly oh, yeah, what oh, it yeah, was. Okay, yeah. And yeah. that's when I shat my pants. I didn't show my pants. That was like, I was like, oh, okay, fuck. Yeah. I wasn't jump scared, but I was like terrified. Yeah. And then it cuts to like the, the Alice's actual dead body's face, and I was like, that's so fucking good. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. I mean, um, you guys know Mike Flanagan? Uh, yeah, Rings Bell. Shout out Mike Flanagan. He will be at Fantasia. Ooh, along so the line. We'll see him soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, he directed Doctor Sleep, the sequel to Shining. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But he also did the sh- the, tea, the Netflix shows uh, Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Blind Haunting Manor. Hill House is pretty good. So, <coughs> excuse me. So he uh, he takes that from this movie, from Lake Mungo. The oh, twist of Hill House is that the ghosts that are haunting the children are their own ghosts from the future. Yeah. He takes that. This is one of his favorite movies. Oh, really? Yeah, and he he takes that directly from this. This movie's fucking awesome, dude. Like, yeah. Fucking awesome. I mean, that twist. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing scarier, I think, than your own ghost from the future haunting you, and just like as a as a premonition of death. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's one like you know a lot of times it's like whatever like a black cat or a wolf or the Grim Reaper as a. Too death. symbolic, but yeah. to have your own fucking ghost approach you in the same yeah. state of your death, yeah, you know, and I, I and I always like even though I love the imagery, yeah, I love the imagery of this movie, the imagery of that ghost, mm-hmm. I love it because it spooks me out so much, yeah, that type of imagery where it's like the black and white kind of punk patch look, yeah, love it, I absolutely. Well, that's the thing it. too with horror is like every other genre, the higher quality you get, like the better the kind of movie, horror the worse quality. Yeah. The scarier it is. Yeah, when you're bit. watching it on yeah. SD and all weird phones zoom yeah. in. There was a few of these shots that were mm. the quality was too bad. Okay. And like specifically when they're showing the hallway. Yeah. And not the hallway when 
What was the brother's name? Matthew. 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 Not one. Not during the fake footage when Matthew walks by and pretends it, it's he's. You mean the one where it zooms onto the mirror? Yeah. I, I couldn't tell that there was a ghost in the mirror. I couldn't I fucking see. I couldn't see, see, see that. I was like, what am I? Am I looking at clock and balls or something? I was like, dude, what yeah. did they zoom in? I couldn't tell. And then it was only after when they showed it again. I feel like it was higher quality the second time. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I agree. I, could, I couldn't tell at all. I Even the tell. second time, I just like. You know, context Inferred. clues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe that's all it was for me too. Maybe I just I put the image mm-hmm. there myself. But yeah. the first time around, I was like, I didn't see shit. I don't get it. Yeah. Well, like yeah. you were saying though, like the the quality I found was off too. Where some of them were too good, even. Where like some of the shots were very good. Yeah. If even the dock ones are nice, but like where it's the footage at the seance or something and it's framed all weird. Yeah. You kind of clue in right away. You go, okay. Why is the hallway fully open and like yeah, way off to the side? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like for sure something is in the hallway. Yeah. And then they show you later and it zooms in like nine hundred percent. Yeah. And it's still perfect. Like, dude, if you zoom that in, nine hundred, you're gonna see a square pixel. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. Color. Yeah. Well, no, sometimes it was a square pixel. It was like pretty pixelated. Some of them, but like, that one specific. One of the funniest shots. At, there was a point in the movie in the very beginning, right when they start doing the footage stuff with like mm-hmm. the cameras in the house. Where I almost thought there was a mockumentary because it was going to be funny. <laughs> like, I almost, there, was, there was one moment where I thought, oh, this is going to be comedy. Okay. Because it's like the mom was like, she's like, you know, I saw the footage and I could tell instantly that it was my, my daughter Alice. And then it cuts to the footage and it's just her pixelated face. You can't yeah, tell what yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was so yeah. fucking funny, dude. There's one shot where, like, it's just Alice from, like, mouth up, I yeah. guess. But it's so pixelated, she looks like a fucking, like, blob. Like, it's barely rec- Like, the face is literally just two black pixels and, like, a black mm. pixel. That, that, that's literally out. what happened in this shot, where it's yeah. like, Mom's like, I was just trying. I, s- I-, I knew instantly it was my target. And it cuts to this fucking yeah. blob of pixels that yeah. made no sense. Dude, that was hilarious. It happened again when, like, they do the... When they go over to footage again and Matthew walks through the hallway and they see the neighbor. Yeah. I was like, oh, Alice is in the footage. She's like, and she's like, I knew instantly. It was my neighbor. Yeah, that didn't and look like it. And you could, like, I could kind of tell, like, based looking on the neighbor, looking at that, that I could see it, it's him. If, if I but that, also, it's like, it's like, it's fucking, I can't tell who that is. No, no yeah. I would have been like, that's a dude. I yeah. could tell it's a dude. The yeah. guy. Couldn't tell if he was squatting. No. But, and I couldn't tell. And also, like, the framing of it, he's supposed to be in the back corner where the safe was hidden, but it looked like he was on the other side of the bed in that shot. Yeah, I, th- I think he was probably hiding because he s- heard or, Matthew yeah, walking right. around. But yeah, I, I, yeah, it was sick. I had the same thing you were talking about before with the music and like the same thing with the high quality and low quality yeah. stuff. I thought the music was almost too good for what it was. Oh, like, really? What the, the subject oh, yeah. was. I, yeah. thought it, I thought it said, I'm, I'm, you know me, I love ambient. Yeah. I love yeah. Silent Hill too and the ambient yeah. music in it. <laughs> I love triangles, I love triangle head. No, the music. Okay, oh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Pyramid Head though. Oh, I love Pyramid. I love I love Silent Hill like crazy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just I just love this kind of ambient music. It's my mm-hmm. favorite thing. That I found it kind of took me out because I'm like, okay, this is a movie music. The music. Do you think it's trying too hard? Yeah, it was too awesome. You know, it was it was too nice for documentary should be bullshit. I don't know if you're making a documentary and it's the spooky, you're gonna put spooky music. Yeah. I didn't find the music spooky. I just found it really good. It was good. I thought it was spooky. It had a good build. Had good tension. But it wasn't like conventional spooky music either. You know. No. It was like ambient droney. Yeah. Stuff which I really yeah. like. It's yeah. I mean, I, having seen this, I don't know when Hell House LLC came out, but it, it, the music is very similar. Mm-hmm. It's also okay. Very good. And yeah, like the, this movie did, did that 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 moment did scare. Like it didn't scare me, but I was kind of like I was shook at the bit. You know, mm-hmm. which moment? The, the with with the with okay. the, the zoom with the ghost. You yeah. know, yeah. the only so like this. I said the only the only movie that really actually scares me, mm-hmm. like actually is um it's called the movie it's a movie called um, uh we need to talk about Kevin. You okay. heard of that? No, I heard of it. Yeah, that is. Yeah. It's not even a horror movie. It's just a thriller. Okay, and it is by far and away the only movie that actually terrifies the shit out of me. Really? Oh yeah. There's no jump scares. No horror in it. It's it's about uh, a kid who's a psychopath, mm-hmm. and it's about the mom t- uh, like raising this kid, and how yeah. this kid grows up to be like a teenager and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's so because like so th- before I watched that movie, I know it's not a review of that movie right now, but. For a while, I'll read like Reddit posts of like people that had children who are psychopaths and how it is dealing with them. This movie's so fucking accurate, it's crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah, because like a lot of the time, like from what I read people's experiences, like when you have a kid that's psychotic, like mm-hmm. sociopathy, you know. Yeah. Um, when they're babies, they cry a lot. 
Okay. Like, m- abnormal amounts of crying. Mm-hmm. And then one day, it just suddenly stops. Out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they, they, they are very charming. They, no one, then they pick a family member to torment. And everyone else just thinks they're normal. Really? And this is kind of the relationship with the mom and the kid. So the kid would, like, be playing around, blah, 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 while the dad's in the room and the sister's in the room. They'd be playing around. And then the second the dad and the sister leave to go to the bathroom or whatever... Kid just stops and looks at his mom. Just throws something at her fucking feet. Like a baby. And it's just like, fu- it's so fucking accurate. It's crazy, dude. And it's it's scary because the mom is just so incredibly gaslit by this kid. Yeah. That her just like, sight and her mental is just fucking ruined. Really? Yeah. But end of the movie, she still loves her kid. She still mm-hmm. goes to... Well, what happens in the movie is that, like, I'm not going to spoil it, but she still... Spoil it. She, the kid ends up doing, like, a school shooting. Okay. Yeah, and gets arrested and stuff like that. It's a very planned out school shooting. Oh, well, it's not shooting, but he takes a like, bow and arrow, locks some kids in the gymnasium, starts shooting bows and arrows at the kids. Okay. And kills a couple kids. Yeah. Kid ends up in jail, and the mom still goes and sees him and says, I love you, you know? Really? But the whole, the whole, the whole city after the kid does that, because the thing is, it, it kind of cuts between, like, the future uh, and, and the past, but you can't tell what happened in these future shit scenes. Yeah. Like, what, what actually happened for, but, like... There's cuts throughout the whole movie from the beginning where, like, she's, she'll be doing groceries. And then she'll leave her cart, and she has, like, eggs in her cart. She'll leave her cart to go pick up something, and then she comes back, and all her eggs are smashed. And someone down the aisle, is, like, looks at her, like, fuck you, you know? Because, like, it's, like, a, okay. a local in the neighborhood oh, that hates her future, like, for okay, what happened yeah, yeah. to their kid at the high school. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. But this is, like, a shot from the beginning of the movie, so you don't know why mm-hmm. all the locals fucking hate her so much, mm-hmm. you know? The dumbass bitch ready to pay for these eggs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, but, but the thing is, the mom just shit. takes it and just like, yep. Climbs on. Uh, <laughs> and then she just buys the broken pack of eggs. Oh, really? But yeah, it's just the saddest thing ever, dude. But yeah, that's the only so movie that I shot at the grocery store. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking cashew. That, that's, <laughs> the only, that's the only movie that scares me. This one kind of scared me with that scene. Yeah. Where I was like, I was like, I had to like listen in to like my neighbors doing stuff, and I was like, oh, <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, oh yeah. I was spooked out by the first like fifteen minutes. I was, I was very spooked out. Oh really? In this movie, yeah. Properly spooked. I was really spooked for fifteen minutes. So, yeah, the first so the first fifteen, I I was uh, I had it, I had I had the movie on my computer, mm-hmm. but I wanted to watch it on my TV, so I was casting <laughs> from my computer because on Google Chrome you can cast you cast you can cast your whole desktop. I cast on my Apple TV over here on my iPhone. Yeah, that works. That works better. Yeah. Mine when I was casting for my desktop, because my desktop isn't on Wi-Fi, it's wired in. Okay. And I think when you cast from something that's wired in to Wi-Fi, something weird happens. So like, I was sitting on my couch watching Lake Mungo on my TV, mm-hmm. and it was like super grainy and super choppy, and I was like, oh, this is a weird aesthetic choice for. A documentary, like mm-hmm. you know, like maybe the old school footage. I was like, okay, this is probably just the movie. Yeah. But then the interview starts chopping up. I'm like, oh, this is weird. Mm-hmm. So I, I have a mirror next to my TV. Yeah. You saw Alice in it. And my uh, <laughs> well, basically, because my laptop, my computer is is opposite my TV. So in my in the mirror, I can see that the movie on my computer isn't choppy or grainy. It's just a normal movie. Yeah. So I think the first fifteen minutes were kind of ruined for me because I was, oh, no. I was, That's it was like bad. cutting and choppy, and yeah. so yeah. I just watched it. But then I think it was, it was better in the long term because then I watched it uh, on my desktop and my computer doesn't have sound, so I had to use headphones. Spooky. So it was way scary, yeah. yeah. You know, like canceling, watching a horror movie with noise canceling headphones mm-hmm. is like, I love that it's shit. fucking. What do you think I do? What do you yeah, think I watch yeah, movies on? Yeah. I watch it on my fucking. I have phone. earphones in for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was it's good. way scarier. Yeah, it was good. Did you guys like the movie? I did, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah? Yeah. 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 I don't think it's one of the scariest movies of all time. I don't, think, I, like, I don't think it's one of the scariest movies of all time either, but I think it's one of the best. And a yeah. good atmosphere, really good atmosphere. I think yeah. it's, I think it's yeah. one of the most well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was very well done. I, I think it's by far and away the, the best found, uh, found footage. I can see Mocky- like really? Documentary style horror movie, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Like, what's better than that? Wreck. I don't think Rex better than that. As, as like a an, fucking good found footage movie. Dude. I love Rex. Trust me. I saw Rex at Fantasia. The Descent. I think this is better. It's also fucking. I think this good. is better. I think the original Cloverfield's a fucking good found footage. It's not a. That's horror. not a horror movie. Yeah. I know, but it's a good found footage movie. It's good. I think Cloverfield's good, but Cloverfield, like I mean, found footage mockumentary. Yeah, I think yeah. this is the best one. We'll do Hell House LLC. Okay. Because I love there's a, there's a, there's a few of them I love them. Okay. It's uh. 
similar, I guess. Okay. Found oh, footage I can't get behind sometimes, but this is kind of changing my mind on it. Oh, yeah. Just like the style of it. Yeah, but I think it's the best one there. I think oh, it's yeah, good. Best it's best I've seen. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, now there's different guys filming here and different guys filming. I don't know if you're, you're like sticking with the like yeah. the outline of the genre. And, and well, why I like it so much is that it kind of underplays these tropes that we were talking about before, you know, yes. of the found footage stuff and yeah, the horror yeah. haunting shit, you yeah. know? And it's just like everything's a slow burn in this movie. Mm-hmm. And my, my favorite, we'll get into favorite shots too, but like, my favorite shot is the one of the ghost slowly coming forward. Yeah. I fucking loved it. I thought it was so good. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I think it was cool, too. There's a lot of uh, really good um, symbolism. And, like, the like Lake Mungo being a dead lake. Yeah. And that's where she sees her dead self, who has drowned yeah. in an actual lake. Yeah. That whole thing plays mm-hmm. into the the... the yeah, temporal haunting and stuff. It's yeah. I think and that whole thing was pretty cool too, and the we haven't talked about the sex tape yet, but that twist. At first, I didn't quite see the point of it at all, but then it kind of works into. Um, the the greater theme of uh, letting go of someone you know, who's not necessarily dying or k- killing themselves because you know, they kind of imply later that she probably killed herself mm-hmm. which is drowning is a weird it's hard to, it's hard to drown I don't yourself. think you can do it even I well no in, in, in Australia yeah. it's very easy to drown no I know but they it's it's kind of implied that she does it on purpose unless she just jumps in a rapids or some shit she goes okay I, 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 I don't think so I think I think it was she knew she was going to die not when Oh, okay, yeah, I can see that. I think, yeah. that, I think that's what happened, you know? She was already predetermined. If she was like, she knew she was going to die. Yeah. Doesn't know when. She doesn't know how. And she buried her stuff in Lake Mungo. Yeah. N- n- those are her pro- most prized possessions in order to not, like, lose them or whatever, you know? Yeah. To me, I know the, I know the film is a... The director has said that it's, it's, a, it's an exploration of grief. Mm-hmm. Like, like every... Yeah. Good haunting, haunting. Yeah, movie. yeah. But I also think it's a great coming of age story Haunt. for the girl. Yeah, for Alice. Like if yeah. we if we if we take her death as a metaphor mm. for her just outgrowing her family. Okay. And then I think it's. So how else does she outgrow her family? Well, like because it's implied that uh, her family isn't religious per se, mm-hmm. because there's a there's a someone they interview throughout who yeah one of the family friends involved yeah. in the church and they're not so involved. Mm-hmm. But they are very family oriented and, and yeah. seem quite conservative. And uh, with Alice's whole this whole sexual uh, liberation, I mean it's it's the family seems convinced like that they want to charge the neighbors for having sex with a teenager. Yeah, I think they did try char- try charging. Her. Yeah, but the sex tape is they were obviously consensual. Yeah. You know, Alice but is the it, one it who goes in. She could have been a minor. I think that's why. Yeah, yes, of course, of course. But yeah. that, but uh, I get it. It's still statutory rape. But mm-hmm. I'm saying, like that's, you know, uh, that's a typical teen revolting against a a, sure. a conservative traditional sure. family. Yeah, sure. And the her being at Lake Mungo with all her friends, and then throwing out all of her favorite things and uh, coming to terms with her own death. It was almost more like a spiritual death, like an ego death. Like, oh, yeah, for sure. I'm outgrowing, yeah. I'm outgrowing this scene, I'm outgrowing my town, mm-hmm. I'm outgrowing my family, like it's time for me to move yeah. on. Mm-hmm. But then uh, when she finally does move on, now it becomes the family's burden of dealing with the fact that their daughter is Someone distancing did. themselves yeah. from the family. Mm-hmm. And then the family ends up coming to the conclusion that, well, okay, well, let's just leave her then fully. Mm-hmm. So the movie ends with the fact that Alice, the ghost of Alice is still in the house. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's a, it's a good uh, coming of age story for Alice as a metaphor for her um, kind of pushing the boundaries of outgrowing your home life, but then the twist of your family kind of taking it one step further and fully cutting you off for that, for sure. being an, an individual. Yeah, but I don't know if they cut her off, because they always have that memory of her there, and she's always kind of, like, there in spirit, you know? 
but they leave. Kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they leave the place where her spirit is. I guess. I guess. But unknowingly. Yeah, I, unknowingly. I mean, yeah. I guess they come to terms with. I mean, if they if they didn't know that Matthew was, they knew Matthew was faking all this shit. Yeah, I kind of, yeah so but they far. also knew that her ghost was real. Mm-hmm. But they yeah, fucked right? from fucking day one almost. The yeah. Yeah. Matthew would have cut off before Alice. Get that guy out of here. It's fucking, it's really fucking annoying, dude. Yeah, get this one. Oh, I like cameras. I like taking pictures. <laughs> He's like a little yeah, autist, yeah. you know? Yeah. A little twink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little twink. Yeah. His best friend looked weird, too. He's got a weird chin. Very, very, very Mav-esque. <laughs> that was not a weird chin. No, but he had, like, the Mav vibe. I don't know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I thought he did. That's the guy standing with the rocks there? No, that's Alice's boyfriend. boyfriend. Matthew's best friend is the one who was, like, he had some, like, manual labor job. Oh, he's got a big fan. Kind of looks yeah. like you. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. They just had, like, a weird, like... Like a tiny chin. His, oh, his yeah. chin was yeah, so he's small very tiny face. chin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like his chin was like the, the the width of my fucking finger. No offense to the actor who played Matthew's friend, <laughs> yeah, whose no name I don't image. remember. Yeah. But uh, I thought your chin was weird. Sorry. Mm, that that really that's what ruined the movie for me was the fucking the guy's chin. chin yeah. 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 Oh, he's like the reverse of the crimson chin from. I would have loved that parents. guy. If that guy <laughs> had seen it, that guy's the best friend. I'm watching. The Crimson Trin from Fam- Fairly Odd Parents? But well, you gotta rewatch the credits. Age. I will rewatch the credits. The credits are really cool. And, yeah. and one of, like you said, we'll get into the favorite shots later. I think yeah. we're premature now. But one of my favorite shots is the very, very last scene at the end and end of the credits. Mm. Okay, really? Yeah, okay. it was a really cool shot. But, um,. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the other thematic uh, element of it being a, an exploration of grief, I think, is, mm. is the obvious. It's the obvious one. Yeah, it's is, almost. Yeah. I think it's it does, I think it does it well, because I think the only other thing I've seen do it really well, like, is Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yeah? Babadook? Have you seen the Babadook? I have not seen the Babadook. The Babadook is a nice... It's not so much of a haunting. It's almost a creature feature, because the, the thing that haunts them is, a, is the Babadook. It's a mm. monster. But that one's, that one's the other one. That, that's, the, that's, I think... In, like, today's horror canon, in the modern horror canon, that's, like, the grief <coughs> monster is the Babadook. That's okay. the most famous. Well, I, I find a lot of a lot of things that are about grief have a representative of the grief in the oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, Hassan Hill. Right. Pyramid Head is the representation of what's-his-face's grief, you know? Or, um, yeah, Martyrs. Have you watched Martyrs yet, still? No. Fucking guy, huh? You watch Martyrs, though, right? I don't think so, no. Okay. <laughs> well, there is a, a like a, like a, um, not a beast, but like a, a, a very clear representation okay. of the person's grief. Okay. What? Or no? In 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 um in in the martyrs, it's the representation of her guilt. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. not the grief. Yeah. I like that. I like when horror explores shame. Mm-hmm. I find yeah. that fun. Yeah. Well, maybe Silent Hill too, also because uh, the main character did find Silent Hill because he killed his wife. Yeah. I think right. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Guilt, but I guess then, then guilt and grief are the same creature. Same side, so, uh, two sides of the same coin. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what else? I was also gonna say that, like, uh, like I find I find drowning in Australia is very easy. Right. Like I've I've read like there's this famous story I forgot who the kids were, but like there are these kids in northern northern Australia in that not uh, well, I forgot what it's called, and. Um, these two kids, they they're like they're like outback kids. Like they really knew how to work the outback yeah. and stuff like that. The bush, bush kids. The bu- bush kids, yeah. And uh, they would like go out with their ATVs up into the bush, you know. Mm-hmm. And they would, and they got super dirty when. And this is a real story. And there's a movie about it too. Um, and there's this uh, these kids, you know, they got super dirty from the bush. So they want to, when they want to go back and go home on the truck, they want to go for like a quick dip in the water. But yeah. usually in Australia, there's designated places where it says. You're allowed to swim here, and there's places where it's like, absolutely do not swim here. And usually you follow that. And generally, the rule of thumb in northern Australia is that if it does not have a sign, you do not go swim in it. Like, mm-hmm. by any means necessary, you don't go swim. Are we talking ocean, or are we talking lakes? Rivers. Rivers and lakes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I'll, I'll explain why in a second. So these kids, they go into the, they go up into the, and you know how it's a kind of a swamp before, it's not like a beach, mm-hmm. right? It's like land, then it's like trees coming out of the water. Wet land. And, yeah, like a wetland, right? Mm. So what these kids were doing is that they were, they would hug on, like hold on to your dip and like wash themselves and then come back up. 
so what happened is that they were doing this and they all kind of like got dislashed from the tree. The, the tide was too strong. But they were like chill about it. They were like going down the stream and they were like kind of catching on to something. And they're like talking to each other, right? And they ca- two of the two guys in front catch on to something. The guy in the third one, gone. Completely. Absolutely gone. No traces. They, they don't even see. No, no yelling, no nothing. Absolutely gone. But this is a river we're talking about. This is a river in Australia. Yeah. yeah. And what happened was that a crocodile got him. Oh, oh yeah. shit. And, and, and the whole mo- like the whole story is important because um, these kids kind of swam to a nearby tree that was in the middle of the river. Oh, okay. And they climbed up on top of it, and the crocodile sat at the base of that tree for like 12 hours. Oh, shit. Pitch black midnight. It, they couldn't even see the crocodile, but when a lightning would strike, they'd see the outline of the crocodile. Or they'd hear a swoosh here and there. That's spooky. And then what happens is that it started raining like crazy. So the water was coming up. Mm. So they were getting really scared, and they had to go further up this little tree, and they're like this for 12 hours. And then at one point, the crocodile left, and one, I think one of the kids fell in. The crocodile came right back. And then they came right back up the street. And what happened eventually is that the next day, a helicopter came. Like, the parents knew that this could probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. They figured something was up, so they sent a helicopter in a boat. And uh, the helicopter scared the crocodile away, and they were able to be free, but they never found the body. Never found a piece of clothing, nothing. So I feel like in Australia, it's pretty fucking easy to disappear or something like that. Yeah, but in the, the, where they were swimming in the movie at the dam, it was, com- this water was completely still. Doesn't have to be, doesn't, it could be still, it could be anything. Doesn't matter. There's also magic too, though. It's like predetermined fucking, it's your destiny no matter what. Yeah. 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 But I feel like there could be so many causes for her yeah. drowning in the water. Yeah. Well, it's also a dam. Yeah. The dam's open, she can get stuck. Yeah, you don't need, yeah. like, a logical explanation. It's, like, yeah. most paranoid. Like, it could yeah. just be... Yeah, yeah, she yeah. could have just drowned. Yeah. Just drowned normal drowning, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or the fucking ghost grabs her and pulls her down or something. Yeah. But there was no splashing, they said. I guess she could catch them underwater. They were right? making out at the time. Oh. Didn't but, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, maybe it's a crocodile that just grabbed her. Yeah. Barreled her underwater, drowned her, and then let her go. Yeah. Because she was kind of fucked up. Like, her face was she all was bloated. bloated, yeah. Mm-hmm. Though she had, like, a black eye. She looked a bit mangled, you know? Her face was cut and shit. Face was cut, yeah. Oh, yeah? A little. Okay. I thought she was waterlogged. It's possible, too. It's possible that she got hit into the dam, you know? Mm-hmm. How you going, mate? You know? Yeah, I do know, yeah. But, but yeah, that's what I was going to say about the water and stuff. You have mm-hmm. some the notes? My other thing was about the uh, the time lapses, like in the actual documentary part, where like we're setting up scenes and establishing kind of shots. There's all time lapse and stuff like the classic oh, landscapes and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really I thought cool. they were cool when it was like of the house and it's time lapse and you see like someone turn the light on and I all like that. Well. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 sound yeah, like that. Like that. That was cool. A few lightning strikes too. Yeah, uh, very cool. Yeah, I like that as well. Yeah. Very cool. Um, what do you guys think of the acting? Because I've heard mixed signals about the acting. I think it worked. I thought it worked for, it worked. for a documentary. People are shit anyways. I yeah, me too. Good. I thought it was great. Yeah, yeah. I thought, it worked I thought the dad particularly was quite good. Yeah. The dad was very good. Yeah. I like the, the mom. Thing. I like the son was whatever. whatever. For me, it was like the one thing that kind of took me out with the interviews was like, we're both people who were supposed to be looking at like what they shot that day. They're both like, well, we were reviewing the footage. You know, like, I don't know. I don't think you're really going to say you're reviewing the footage. You're going to say like, oh, we were watching the tape or yeah. I looked at the video or something. That was the only thing that I was kind of sure. like, okay, yeah. well, that's kind of like... Like a normal... Yeah, that was the only thing that was not Human wouldn't normal. call it reviewing the footage. Yeah, it was yeah. reviewing yeah. your beach trip, you know? I was yeah, watching yeah. the video or something. I watched the video. That I was reviewing the footage of when we fucking, you know... Yeah. That was the only thing. Other than that, I thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. I didn't have an issue with that. I like the acting because it's, it's documentary style, right? So it's not supposed mm-hmm. to be like super relaxed. It's supposed to be normal people. It's supposed yeah, to feel but, normal. But I think the dad specifically was quite good. I mean, he had like the subtleties... Mm-hmm. It was subtle enough, but, like, they'd ask him a question, and he would say one thing, but his facial expression or his pauses would be so telling. I thought, the, I thought that that was easily the best performance. Yeah, yeah. I, thought it was, I thought it was actually genuinely very good. I'll uh, ad-lib to everything. Right? Really? No script for the movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was just he would ask the well, director. Sure the tur- yeah, okay. The guy asking questions. Oh. Like, and he would just ask a question, and they would do this, and they just shot, like, that's that's, that's that's very good. And that, that, that's yeah. maybe why. I see. I say if anyone more. has criticism of the acting, that's, like, that's, like, kind of... Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is all on the spot. He's coming up with yeah. the answer. That's tough. 
Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they did, like, seven tapes or whatever. Probably. Yeah. They probably did a fucking three hours interview yeah. each time. And it was well, cool, too. I found where they were changing location, too, for the interviews. Yeah. As if it was a real yeah, life. job yeah. at home. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Um, apparently, the movie... Uh, the only reason Joel Anderson made this movie was because he couldn't secure the budget to make the movie he actually wanted to make. So he decided to make... Uh, this movie instead, Cheap. because it'd be a, he'd be able to do it on a on a very uh, reduced budget, mm-hmm. which I think is interesting because now it's it's one of the most notorious, infamous, because it's not famous because you guys have never heard of it. No, but it's it's a favorite movie, favorite horror movie director's favorite horror movie. I guess yeah, I mean it's Mike Flanagan's favorite horror movie. Mm-hmm. He's one of my favorite horror directors, not because of his movies. I think his movies are kind of shite. Okay. No offense, Mike Flanagan. If you watch this before Fantasia when I meet you, uh, yeah, fuck uh, you, sorry. Mike. Give me more tickets. But Midnight Mass is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Oh really? It's so yeah. fucking good. Hill House too. Haunting of Hill House. Haunting of Hill House is so, so good. Haunting of Bly Manor is like whatever. It's not as scary. Haunting of Hill House. Is fucking Hill House is fucking good. Fucking good, yeah. You know, you know. I haven't watched it. Well, so um. I'll spoil it for you. You ever watch Haunting of Hill House? No. I don't totally think watch so. It. I don't think totally so. watch it. It's like a mini series, uh, like 10 episodes. There's a yeah. ghost that haunts a character, and it's the crooked neck ghost and whatever. Yeah. And you find out at the end of the series that the crooked neck ghost mm. is herself because okay. she hangs herself. Mm hmm. So her ghost has a oh, broken yeah. neck. Yeah. So that's literally yeah. directly from, like, Mundo. Yeah. He took that, to, that's okay. his inspiration for that, for that whole thing of the mm-hmm. ghost haunting you in the past. Your own ghost haunting you in the past is a premonition of your death. It was all related, right. but his his uh, Hill House is more about it's less about grief and more about family trauma. Yeah, okay. it's very it is or very family bad. grief. Yeah, yeah, yeah it okay. is very because it's about like kind of centers around this like the mom mm-hmm. who kind of went crazy and killed herself. Yeah, and they kind of live in this mansion, right? And they're all haunted by this kind of thing that happened with their mom. Yeah. And it kind of goes into their, like, later lives, too, and stuff like that. So it's, it's a fucking good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, you, you go through the series, and you're like, oh, okay. Like, there was there were no ghosts. They were all just spooked because the mom was going crazy. Okay. But then you find out there were actual ghosts. Oh, they were their own ghosts because yeah. they end up killing themselves. Okay. And it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And and I like it when in, in those types of th- especially Hill House. I'm, I don't know about, like, Bundle is like this, but, like, I like when it's, like, almost like an innocent kind of haunting. You know, it's not like a malicious haunt. Yeah, yeah, they're not gonna hurt you. They're not gonna hurt you. Like they're yeah. very like, it's almost like they might like be haunting you as like a form of security, or a form of warning or something. Not really a form of like ma- malicious haunt. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I like that a lot. You know. Yeah. The mom in this one, I found like maybe underdeveloped. Oh, really? The only thing. I mean, she had a lot of fun little B and C stories, like her going in other people's houses and she's going nuts and she yeah. believes this and that. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't think it was too like deep. It was almost like an off comment, and then 30 minutes later we had another guy saying, oh, the fucking mom was going in people's houses. You know, it's not like, yeah. I don't know, I felt like a few of her stories maybe could have been built up. Yeah, more. and when, when, when they discovered that their neighbor had been in their house, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, what, he likes to break into houses too? Like, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. My first thought was like, he's probably just pranking them because he Ooh, found her in their house or whatever. Yeah. Then it was the whole sex tape thing. Yeah. I mean, well, how do you guys interpret the sex tape thing then? I gave my pitch. What do you guys... Why, I think why is it in accurate. the movie? You know, if we, if we ignore the coming of age stuff and if that doesn't fit, then why have I think that it's there? more of, of a device to explain that she had this other life that the family didn't know about. Yeah, but why have that? And, hi- and try to hide it, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's the only thing, really. Mm-hmm. There's another... There's another, there's another reading I stumbled upon for, for this film that plays into the form. Because mm-hmm. uh, film is, plays a very important role in the movie, right? Yeah. From the kids doctoring of footage mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. all of the uh, paranormal evidence being in found mm-hmm. footage, right? Mm-hmm. So the form is obviously very important. And there's a line... Uh, spoken by Alice's friend where she said uh, you know I guess Alice had secrets and she kept her secrets secret Mm -hmm. and I I, that reminded me of I don't know if it was intentional but it it played in in my interpretation of the film 
into uh, Matthew's doctrine of the footage okay. and how the movie might play on uh, a commentary of uh, our perception of reality through media. Sure. Right, how um, reality is... Uh, our reality is formed by mediated images that we might not have control over. Okay, yeah. And how easily reality can be manipulated. Mm -hmm. And how through the manipulation of media and, and our perception, we can drudge up ghosts and make them real. Okay. Right? Like, okay. maybe Alice's yeah. ghost wasn't real until they started making it real. Okay. With that being said... Yeah. I, I'm just... I like video drill a lot. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, do you feel like the footage on her cell phone of her seeing her own ghost, do you think mm -hmm. that was faked? I think everything's real. Like the ghosts in the fake the image, everything right. her there. I think it's all real. Because for maybe, the story, at least. Yeah, for the story, story, but like, I think it's all real. Imagine that's doctored. Well, see, this is the thing: is that because of the because of the the time travel nature of the haunting, mm -hmm. her ghost appearing, Alice's ghost appearing to her at Lake Mungo, can be a result of Matthew inserting images post post mortem. Right, because we're ignoring the linear mm. function of time now. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Because the haunting can go back in time, and forward in so time. So, are you saying that because Matthew retroactively used Alice's image in the doctoring of his own films, is that the reason why she died? Yes. Okay. Yes, I think the in the, in the in the time Fuck. in the time travel loop sort of way. Sure. Mm -hmm. I in think the interstellar kind of way. Right. Yeah. I think the movie is proposing that the alteration, modification, falsification of reality through film, through media, can actually change reality. So how? Okay. So. You know, it's a closed loop. What's well, so that to do with the sex tape then? Because the sex tape is arguably the only reliable piece of found media in the movie. Yeah, I went on a tangent there. I, that was just the sex tape reminded me of the line about secrets okay. and secrets and the secrets mm -hmm. to me. Because it could be like that they did the sex tape where it's all consensual, but really it wasn't. But the set, yeah. the purpose of the sex tape was to show falsely that it was consensual when it might oh, have not. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe. Yeah. True, yeah. A, a, mm -hmm. Another layer of, of falsification via... Yeah. Yeah. True. Maybe. I mean, it's hard to... I mean, that, that's the whole reason statutory rape is a law, is because it's hard when you have two adults influencing a teenager, it's hard to verify whether the consent is real or not. Exactly, yes. Okay, there you go. Right. Yeah. So I think that's valid. Yeah. Just like the kind of double haunting, I'm not sure, but because like... If you're following, like, the logic of the movie itself, like, the creation of the final image, it couldn't have been made, like, without, I don't know, the dad's kind of involvement kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, even if he yeah. made a fake thing, you'd go, I don't yeah. know, it's not the actual mm -hmm. image of yeah. her dad. So, so I think, so this is, this is, you know, with any time travel thing, it's hard to find an origin. Yeah. But the way I see it is that... She would have to die once for real. And then she would have to die once start. for real. Yeah. And then maybe she killed herself because of the sex tape. That's True. the real death. Yeah. Step two is the mother did not see the corpse, so yeah. she never got closure. Mm -hmm. Step two is the mother's lack of closure made the father doubt his own closure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now all of a sudden the whole family can't let go. Yeah. yeah. And because they can't let go, they the son starts falsifying reality. Yeah. And altering reality. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, they're bringing the dead back. Quite literally, because they dig up her corpse. Yeah. Right? They're, they're disturbing the dead, mm -hmm. and they're not letting go. And metaphor, 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 they create the ghost of Alice. Yeah. Who then goes back in time, and now we get all the time travel to close the mm -hmm. loop. That's what I... That's, yeah. that's one thing. It's very possible. I, yeah. think, I think that's pretty valid. I think it's real, though. If, like, it right. becomes a physical... Yeah, apparition. yeah, but yeah. I think that's I think that's what the movie, whether Joel Anderson intended it or not, mm -hmm. is claiming. Yeah, is that is that it's that easy to make something fake reality through this medium. 
through yes. film. This is yeah. what film is. Yeah. yeah. Is is that's what mm-hmm. cinema is. Is is yeah. making. Because I mean, uh, is right. creating an did, ultimate reality. Did, did you guys think that the 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 Matthews footage was faked until you found out it was? No. I didn't think so either. Mm. And I think e- then also the fact that we're introduced to the footage, we think it's real. We discover it's fake. Yeah. But yeah, then at the credits, we yeah. find out that there actually, there actually is there's a second there somewhere. Yeah. That I think also plays into the, the yeah. alteration of reality, creates the alternate reality. But you, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think that's I think that's pretty correct. And I was gonna say this is kind of aside too, but like talking about how this movie might be the scariest ever is like. Another thing that kind of freaks me out a lot is like you know when you look at an image and you don't notice something. Yeah. And you notice it like, a, a while after. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, it's like, you know, like those, um, those real life stories of two people having like video footage in their house or like they take a picture and they're like, it's normal for 20 years, but then they notice there's a fucking guy in the corner. Yeah. Peeking through the hole. Yeah. It's like, fuck, that always freaks me out more than yeah. anything, you know? I mean, that's why the post credit scenes are so sick. Ex- yeah, I know. I got to watch it. like, fuck, I got to live in The movie yeah. tricks you by zooming in on the Alice they want you to see right away. Yes. So your focus is there. Yeah, and they start looking for it, and then the one time you actually end up looking for it, you see the neighbor. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and then at the end of the movie, they're like, "Haha, we tricked you. Mm-hmm. The real ghost of Alice was there. Mm-hmm. You fucking idiot. You stupid bitch." So how how did they notice that the ma- the family? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. in that like world, it would still all be memory kind of thing. It wouldn't like disrupt the actual sure yeah index that they're yeah. referencing yeah but but i mean I, again it's magic it doesn't matter like, the, the same way we didn't notice it i guess i mean right the i think yeah math, they're so focused shows, on the exactly, on the everything yeah. on the obvious okay. one yeah. it's only the, the documentary filmmakers who are the ones actually analyzing the photographs the rest yeah. of the time is just saying oh my god there's alice yeah and that's it <laughs> oh, <there's Alice>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. would you just get scared right now <laughs> where is she it's like it's like I saw this video of this guy at a Walmart. He had a two hats, one had an A, one had an H, and he says it's a, he has the two hats like this, and one says A, one's H. And he's like ah, ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should have filmed this episode the other way, so we could have hid someone in the background. That would have been too scary. We'll hide. We'll hide someone's uh, face. Well, in you the, keep checking. We running out of room or something. What's I, going the on? battery's going down pretty quick on this. Oh yeah. And I got a piss, so I was gonna make it a two for one. If we you have extra batteries, okay. I got more batteries. Yeah. Are we recording? Hello. It's funny. All right, we're back. Um, Shout out, Gray Hoodie Lux, Loaded Lux. What's yeah. up? You're watching us from the other side now. We switched it on you. We're the ghost version. Exactly. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, we're uh, we're in the past and future simultaneously now. So yeah, careful. We're reversed. Mm-hmm. We're coming in. Um, I noted down in ter- in terms of metaphors and stuff the the fact that they had to drive in reverse. Mm-hmm. From the lake. After that was a weird body. one, yeah. That's like the same thing as I find, like looking in the mirrors and all this. It's like bringing back the the world that's not supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah. It is funny that driving in reverse. Though. I'm fucking going reverse, yeah. going to the spirit world or well, something. You know? Well, that's that's what I noted first. Was that oh maybe it's like um, what is it? It's from Nosferatu, right? Where they they cross that's the bridge and the, there's the, the Phantom River. You have to right, cross. exactly. Yeah. I thought maybe it's that. Maybe it's them. Or no, the river of the damned or something into the land of phantoms is what okay. it's supposed to be yeah. mm-hmm. so like, across that you're in the ghost world yeah mm-hmm. so I thought maybe it was that but then I also thought maybe it's it's just you know it's it's a it's a representation of their inability to let go mm-hmm. sure right they're they they're, they're moving back. backwards yeah. they're, they're moving they're moving forwards in time but in reverse back. while looking yeah. back yeah exactly yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just thought that was a nice touch. You know, there's a few the instances. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ray was funny there. You gotta cover your mirrors when you have a death in the family. Yeah, <laughs> where I'm from. Yeah. 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 Where, where, from, where are you from? Poland? Brisbane, asshole? Where are you from? Fuck. Sydney? Shut yeah. up. Yeah, I thought that was a nice touch. I also like that uh, she was buried in a coffin and not a casket. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. true. But which was interesting because the night before I walked the movie, mm-hmm. I turned to my girlfriend in bed and I said, when I die, I think I'd prefer a coffin. Oh, I don't want to cast. Oh, they're way cooler. They're so yeah, they're still so much cooler. cooler. Yeah. The difference between the two. So the coffin is the classic yeah. s- uh, hexagon shape. Mm-hmm. A casket is usually Square. rectangular with a rounder top. Oh, you gotta have it like Dracula. Dude. That's exactly that. You know, really? you gotta go yeah. coffin. Yeah. 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 Like, I'll, I'll want my coffin bad, pimped out though. I just a fucking wood coffin, mm-hmm. spray painted black. I want it pimped out, bro. Oh yeah, I want my eyes open. Like I want like I want <laughs> like, like that, that pimp my ride kind of thing, yeah. where it's like a yeah, speakers. There's like speakers and like a PlayStation <laughs> Two, <laughs> you know. 
just in case. <laughs> Instead of ringing up a bell. Like, we heard yeah. Dante like Metal Gear Solid 3, so we're just coughing as like <laughs> fucking Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation 2, and I'm just there like this with the controller. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> a real Metal Gear Solid would just be a box. Just a, your coffin is just a cardboard box. No, they would paint the box like uh, like iconography on the on the yeah. Car- yeah. on the coffin. Yeah. It's like when they did the fucking the nurse. They're like, we heard you're a fucking. Like a cardiology nurse, we put a cat scan in the car, bro. Did they actually do that? <laughs> yeah, they did, bro. So dumb. And they opened the trunk and there's a fucking cat scan in the back of her car, bro. I thought it was the funniest shit, bro. Or there's one where it's like, we heard you like movies and there's like a popcorn machine in the fucking car. That's what? actually pretty hard. I think the fuck I, I love pin my ride. Yeah. It's a funny thing. Ninety thousand dollar machine in like your truck. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's no way it was functional, dude. <laughs> Not ninety thousand, bro. The fucking cat scan machine's like a million dollars. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I think it's funny that the, I think, what do you guys think about Ray, the, the psychic? <sighs> it was what he was, though, like, they even said, oh, he's a Rasputin character, but I think he was, like, a genuine guy, just some loser. You think, you think the movie treats him genuinely? I think the form yeah, does, but yeah. the yeah. dialogue doesn't. I'm mm-hmm. setting myself up, because I have, because I, I think it's, there's a couple bits in here that are, that mm-hmm. are very funny to me. Of Ray? Of Ray, yeah. Yeah. When he introduces himself... He says, oh, my name is Ray, whatever. He's like, but my real name is this. And he says, I changed my name to sound more trustworthy. Yeah. (laughs) Which is fucking funny for a psychic, for someone who's known... Mm-hmm. Has a, the stereotype of lying to people mm-hmm. to lie to people to seem more trustworthy. I mean, that's the thing. He works so well. It's and so he, does, he does end up lying to them. And, yeah, and, for the and then, and then a, a few scenes later, I think the mother says, uh, "There was nothing fake about him." <laughs> After he just tells us his name is fake, yeah. I thought that was fucking funny. But what I like about Ray's character is that they do treat him like that. Yeah. But then, like, they kind of undermine, it get under- undermined because they do feel betrayed by him. Towards the end? Yeah, I think the movie mm-hmm. the movie at first dunks on psychics. Yeah. But then is is then sympathetic to his character because whether he's a hack or not, he's genuine. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. He's yeah. a genuine guy even yeah. if he's saying bullshit. He believes it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think I think the most important part about Ray is the fact there's this dual thing mm-hmm. where the mom's seance with him at the end of the movie or like later in life parallels with Alice's seance with him. Yeah, so cool. And that's so cool. It's yeah. so well done. But yeah. all of the seances parallel with the family's experiences, right? The dad's dream mm-hmm. is her f- is Alice's first seance. Oh, is it? I didn't realize. Well, the the uh, no, the mother's dream the mother. is Alice's first. The mother's yeah. dream is the same as Alice's dream. She's yeah, Alice's dreams where she's soaking wet standing and her mother dreams that Alice is there standing at the bed soaking wet. Yeah. yeah. And then the father sitting in the bedroom and Alice mm-hmm. walks in is Alice's first seance and yeah. Alice's last seance is the se- is the parallel to yeah. to the mother's last seance yeah I thought that was very good I thought yeah. that that, part, that might be the most well done part of the movie I, I thought that was really cool too yeah, yeah it's a nice really touch cool. yeah. like you don't see you don't see it done like that very often you know what else do I got here pizza crumbs That's it. Okay. Zilcho. I'm always exhausted a while ago. So no, okay. Yeah, I think, I mean, the, you, the, the, the jump scare felt cheap to me. The, 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 the Matthew one? Yeah, you, you gotta almost. No, I, I don't mean, think you need to have one. That's what the, I like the, the jump scare was the most predictable part of the movie. You knew it was coming. Yeah. I knew it was coming. But it was yeah. still spooked me. But the, I, pause, the, the pause still got me. Because yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, it's coming. And then it didn't. I was like, oh, okay. And then I relaxed and then I fucked it. Yeah. For me, for me, it was that 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 f- phone footage one at the end. It's not even a jump scare. Mm-hmm. But that's the jump scare we're talking about. That's the same scene. The phone footage of her seeing her ghost. Yeah. yeah. At the end, it goes whoa, and she zooms in. I, yeah. I didn't think that was a jump scare at all. I yeah, thought you were talking about the yeah, Matthew one. There's a Matthew jump scare. Yeah, where he walks across the frame. Oh, yeah, there's no. I'm thinking more like big zoom and a. Oh, yeah, because no, because it didn't do a big zoom. It it, it, it it zoomed in solely for like thirty seconds. But yeah. then it pauses. But it, yeah, it waits. And then there's a punch with a volume increase. It's a big. Oh, <laughs> really? I didn't. Yeah. Right I, didn't, I thought it was not that. You might have been too focused on how sick the shot was before that. Yeah, maybe. Because yeah. my favorite shot. Yeah. Because <laughs> for me, how how it happened was that it was like this white line in the distance. And it was getting closer very slowly, very slowly. I'm like, okay, yeah. what is that? And then it got close enough where I was like, okay, it's Alice. And then and then it got closer and I was like, oh, it's dead Alice. Yeah. You know, I don't remember the big 
zoom slow, then close zoom, then yeah, fa- yeah. you know, it's like, a hard cut after the yeah. Yeah. really. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. you fucking realize. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and um, you know when they're when they're at the uh, when they're back at the dam. And there's the farmer's photos. Yeah. Where there's a who who's that in the background and it just oh it's just Matthew. It's fucking Matthew, yeah. And then there's the couple's footage of that same day where they're like, No, that's just Matthew. At the in the credits they show their that footage again Alice and there's Alice, there's Alice somewhere else in the in Okay, the interesting. In the bush. Yeah. All right. It's like literally every instance where they fooled us the first time, Alice mm. was actually there. Okay, I see. Yeah. And that shot specifically, the the couple at the uh, at the lake filming when they panned over his shoulder, they panned, and I was like, hey, who's that? And then they kept panning, and then they zoomed in yeah, on Matthew. Else, yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Someone else there. I, that's the only yeah. one I caught. That's the only one And then okay. they came back to it later, and I was like, oh, fuck, I should have. I saw that. I was like, because mm-hmm. once they panned on Matthew, instead, I was like, oh, it was probably just a fucking tree. Yeah. I was like, whatever. I was like, damn, I should have. Damn, that's why I should have trusted fleeted. my fucking, yeah. yeah. That that's was wild. the only one I found a bit stupid. Like, there was a guy filming that day, and he saw this. And there was someone else filming from a different angle. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know it's like they're, they're really triangulating, yeah. like, the fucking FBI. Yeah, and right. all the massive shit, you know? It's the same, but, you like, know, in a small police. town, yeah. And what else are you going to do? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. I guess so. But mm. to review the footage. Yeah, you got to review the footage. You got to review the footage. Yeah. yeah. So you guys want to move to a uh, letterbox reviews? Sure. Favorite shots. Favorite, Favorite shots, shots, yeah. I mean, what yours is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was that Zoom yeah. at the end. Mm-hmm. That one, I also really like a lot of the... Um, the interview shots. Like, I like the one where the, the Mav-esque guy with the fan behind <laughs> yeah, the him. Fan. I thought that was a good... Was it the fan or was it, like, the weird, like... Weird turbine yeah, thing. Yeah, that yeah. thing was weird. I think for, like, a, you know, get the... I like a lot of the landscape the shots, too, of the house yeah. and stuff like that. The time-lapses were sick. Time-lapses were sick. Yeah. yeah. Were sick. The foggy ones, too, near the climax. Oh, all of them. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the easily, cool. easily my favorite is that, that, that slow zoom with the ghost, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm thinking it was almost more the, uh, like, the stuff I found, like, straight documentary was when, uh, Matthew was kind of setting up his camera, and I think it's the first time we see him, like, oh, he's getting into to photography, and then it cuts <laughs> to him, like, super macro, handheld, and, like, cutting between the stuff, but... When he's taking the, ch- when he's in the photo booth? I think booth. it might have been, yeah, yeah, and he's, like, moving the camera, and he's setting up the lens or something. And it's so fluid and handheld and just very nice. It's like, what? Well, it's just a picture. He's, right now he's working at the camera place and it's Something like, like that. Yeah. But it was super these are, macro. These are pictures of Spider Man. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were super macro and I thought they were just so fluid in the editing of it. Yeah. That was my favorite, like, moment. I don't think it was maybe a shot or a frame yeah, on its own. Like, this was a nice yeah. fluid moment I thought was very yeah. nice. It was really well done. Very cool. I wrote a few down. Yeah. I have uh, seven? Eight? Oh yeah, seven. I mean, when the first started, mm-hmm. I was like, "This is gonna be tough for favorite shots." Because mm-hmm. at first it was like all like the news footage from the lake and stuff. And yeah. I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be like." And then whenever they would show the ghost, it was like so grainy. I was like, "Well, fuck, that can't be my favorite shot. I can barely fucking see anything." Yeah. But then they hit me with uh, the two fucking old geezers in the funeral parlor. Mm-hmm. That was a fucking good one. That yeah. pit goes so hard. It's it's a very that's a very you can tell the DOP was like a photographer. Dude, this I the the second that shot hit me, I was like, where the fuck is this coming from? That 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 was yeah. T- yeah I I actually that might be my favorite shot too because I remember so seeing sick. that and I was like, fuck, that's a good shot. They just showed the old man. I was like, who the fuck is this? And I just him, they're they're like, literally, at the dude, yeah, literally like, fuck, like they look like gangsters. Very, right? very like Vice style. Yeah, dude, you know, like journalistic. Fucking, it was sick. And then they have the they have the long one and they have the one where they go zoom in on their faces. So it was sick. fucking good, yeah. yeah. That was that. That is my favorite shot. It was the first one I keyed in on. It was my. It is my favorite. It was the uh, the morgue door when they dig up her body later. Mm. The do- the morgue door is like a barn door. It's a sliding okay. door. Yeah. Just the framing of it is very cool. Mm. It, was, it reminded me of your favorite shot from Poor Things, the lab. Oh, okay, Just like yeah. there's like a body on the slab. It's yeah. covered, but there's a body on the mm-hmm. slab, and there's the door, and it's just like a very well posed mm-hmm. lab shot. There's also pigs hanging at one point. Oh, mm-hmm. bloody too. So and this that shot. It, it was one of Matthew's photos. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. Oh, yeah. Matthew had some fucking good ones. I wrote that as that's my next one. Matthew's photos. My, yeah, yeah, my yeah. favorite one was the one where he's in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, it was a double mirror, that's and it was cool. like perfectly centered. And I was like, oh, that was yeah. such, such yeah. a fucking good photo. I wonder if Alice is hiding somewhere in there. Mm. Um, the girl walking outside the church, the establishing shot of the church, her walking by the church, just well composed, mm-hmm. well framed. I don't think it's in my favorite, but it's it's just a nice shot. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Lake Mungo. When they're at Lake Mungo. Mm-hmm. After they find 
her buried possessions. Mm -hmm. They're interviewing the father, mm -hmm. and they use an insert shot of mother and daughter in the background walking mm -hmm. away from the camera, father in the foreground walking towards the camera in Lake, in Lake Mungo, in the dried yeah. up lake. Beautiful. I thought it was just a, a very, very nice shot. And then the last one I wrote down was the very, very last shot of the movie. After the credits completely, oh, okay. the flashing one. Yeah. It's um, it's black and white. It's the the it just credits end, cut fade to black, fully, and then there's a lightning strike, and you just see Lake Mungo with, you you don't know if it's like Alice's ghost, ghost or yeah. Alice or the real Alice, but it's just her standing, silhouetted, just her back, mm -hmm. in front of Lake Mungo, and there's just like a couple like goes back That's to black cool. lightning yeah. shot, you pops up again. Mm -hmm. I think it was a bit green though. I don't know if it was black and white. I think it was like black and green. No, I'm colorblind, so. Oh, okay. I think there was a green hit oh, okay. hue to it. Yeah. That is good. And you reminded me of the uh, the time lapse stuff I was talking before, where the lights were going on and off in the house. And it was <laughs> yeah. Those were sick. Yeah. All that stuff is very cool. Yeah. Hey, good flick. Yeah. Good, good flick. The, uh, hit up the old LB. LB. I got I got a good one right here. Go for it. Mind you, it's a half star. Mm hmm. Uh. By Awakening Myth. Let's see what his favorite movies are. Awakening Myth. His favorite movies are Clockwork Orange, Aliens, Possession, and The Thing. Aliens? Yeah. The fucking... That's James Cameron, right? The Avatar director? No, no, no. This is like the second Alien movie. Yeah. Ooh, James Cameron. Yeah. Um, and he just wrote, who the fuck spells Matthew with one T? <laughs> Does he? <laughs> yeah. In the credits I downloaded, I think it was two Ts. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah. Oh, but I guess when they introduce him for the first time, oh, it was one to the lower third. Mm -hmm. that, that's all I got. Every all the other all the negative re reviews are more like not scary, not as scary as I thought, uh, not really found footage. But I think those are all people that like the kind of mm -hmm. really tropocetic, you know, jump scare horror movie things. Yeah. But you well, know, I'll start with five stars. Yeah, let's go. Um, Julia, shut up. So I got two reviews by Mike Flanagan. Shout out Mike Flanagan. We're shouting on them a lot. But he's, he actually has a Letterboxd account and reviewed the movie. Okay. Which is how I found out all the stuff about that he liked the movie. So this is his initial review of the movie. It says, What is there to say about Lake Mungo except that it is one of the greatest independent horror films ever made? I rented this on a lark many years ago, part of the eight films to die for series, expecting very little. I was gobsmacked by what I saw and have spent the better part of the last 15 years trying to share this movie with as many people as I possibly can. Rendered in the style of a documentary, complete with talking head interviews and reenactments, this tragic ghost story is a work of art. Rich characterization and a phenomenal plot help this story reach depths of dread, loss, regret, and heartache that truly amaze. It also features one of the single most terrifying shots I've ever seen, a moment that made me physically stand from my couch and retreat from the movie. Not because it is a jump scare, it isn't, but because of what the image means. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's... That's, yeah. the, that's, the, that's the shot I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where the, the sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ross! Fuck, yeah, he her vagina's so big! Yeah. <laughs> he means stand up, not stand up. <laughs> uh, this is one of the best and most beautiful ghost stories I've ever seen. A true inspiration on every level. I can absolutely feel the influence of this movie in my own work, which I've spoken about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we should we should hit him up see if he's down to answer some questions about Lake Mungo. Oh, yeah. yeah, fuck the movie you're promoting right now. You want to let's talk about Lake Mungo. He'd actually probably be down. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and then later on he reviews it again. He says got to share this with some people. Joel Joel Anderson's chilling, devastating story. I don't think he says anything else that's uh, that's uh, worth noteworthy. But he re mm -hmm. he's reviewed it twice. That's already. a nice review though. Okay. Yes, he gave it five stars. Of course. Yeah. Uh, really, uh, should we check what Mike Flanagan's favorite movies are? Yeah, we should. All That Jazz. That's good. Lawrence of Arabia. The yeah, Shawshank awesome. Redemption. Yeah. Good fucking save. Oh. I was close to What one. the fuck? Julia, what's wrong with you, fuck? Well, she's never doing that again. That was close. And we're back in the real world. We've been flipped again. That was Alice. That That's was kind of Alice's cool. ghost. I'll, I'll write that yeah. down. Yeah. 1740 on the second clip. There you go. What a save. There you go. <sighs> Fuck. And uh, Ikaru. Ikaru? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kurosawa. Our Mike Flanagan's favorite movies. Next up is Tony. Tony the Terror. His favorite movies are the original Suspiria, Session 9, Soul Survivor, and Darkness. Okay. 
Uh, he gave it five stars as well. He writes that it still holds up as one of the best found footage horror films out there with an impending sense of dread unlike almost anything I've ever seen. That I will agree with. Mm-hmm. The, the, the atmosphere and the mood progressively descends mm-hmm. throughout the film. Yeah. You get a bit of uh, a breath of a fresh air when Matthew's like, hoo pranked you. Yeah. Uh, but then it, it slowly and quickly goes back into... Yeah. Into... Mm-hmm. That first half yeah. was very, yeah. very much like that. Because also, also like, when we find out that the neighbor was in the shot, until we find out about the sex tape, I thought the neighbor might have killed her and yeah, then be fled. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. Well, the mother said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Because the mother, the mother accused them of killing her as well mm. to hide the fact that they statutory raped her. Yeah. But it's like, how do you not notice someone drowning your own dog in a lake while you're there? Yeah. True. Tony goes on to say that he was looking for something deliberately slow-paced to lull me off to sleep. But I had forgotten just how much melancholy comes with that pace. And now I'm not asleep and acutely aware of the fragility of my own experience and unbearably lonely, unbearable loneliness of impending death. <laughs> That's funny. So I think he's exaggerating a little. Yeah, a bit of a funny review, though. Or maybe he was a little zipped, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, good I love the different directions it goes... And the way it manages to stay creepy, even when the bit with the brother plays out. I used to think the scene in the desert was the truly scariest part, but after several rewatches, it's the final scene between the mother and the psychic that gets under my skin and stays there. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's a cool scene. Yeah. Julia, shut up. Fuck. Uh, oh, Claire, God. another five star. Favorite movies, Night of the Living Dead. The Living Dead at the Manchester Morgue. Okay. Let's scare Jessica to death. And the symptoms. I don't know. I'm giving that a thumbs down. That list. <laughs> eh. Seems a little try hard. Yeah. The final moments of this are existentially horrifying beyond measure. They think they know, but there is no perception without violence. What does that mean? Violence, <laughs> no, I don't think that means. That. I think they're trying to use words. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't mean anything. No true knowing. Okay. All is mediated. All is incomplete. All is recreation in our own image. So much is lost irrevocably. To be a ghost is to be forever unseen, unheard, locked inside yourself. Shut up. Cursed <laughs> with the desire to be known. But this is the condition of life in matter. Everything is ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> this guy sucks, dude. This guy sucks. It's very like. <laughs> yeah. so that's why I like that review because that, that I was pretty it. bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was one sentence, one bit in that that like was like. Even that all. Okay, made sense. The, the ghost being unnoticed. Like, yeah. okay, yeah, I understand okay. that. You know. Uh, Snat nine, no favorite movies, but he says humongous waste of time. Half a second. Humongous. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was a silly little review. Mongo uh, Another half star by Arkham Knight Rider. Uh, that, okay, that, that tells yeah. us everything we need yeah. to know already. Favorite movies are Another Me, Puppet Master, Godzilla Minus One, and uh, Friday the 13th Part 3, I think? New Blood? New Blood is Part 3, mm-hmm. right? Um, he says, I really wanted to like this, but sadly I don't. In fact, I really fucking hate Lake Mungo, and will never understand why people have give it such high praise. It is boring, predictable, desperate, and extremely lazy. It also uses sexual assault involving a threesome with a babysitter and a couple as a meaningless shock value, because it needs to make the audience go, OMG, so disturbing and profound. <laughs> disturbing and profound. If you want Fuck to watch a horror mockumentary, mockumentary that is actually good, watch Hell House LLC. Okay. The Bay, never heard of it, uh, and the Poughkeepsie Tapes. Okay. Would you call me? Poughkeepsie Tapes yeah. rules. Yeah, I mean, I was spooky fucking yeah. back in the day. But uh, I don't think the sexual assault is there just for shock value. No, well, I like what you said before, where it's still the coming of age kind of thing. Like, she's yeah. gone away. So, yeah, that's a nice thing. I mean, it, it, if you're looking for a meaning for that moment, there's your meaning right there. Oh, I'm always forward. looking for So, I mean, it, it's good there. That's my job here. I, mean, I got one over here. Yeah. Someone, uh, four and a half stars. Lily. Oh. Her favorite movies are Suspiria. Which one? I think the new one. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think the new one. I can't tell. With Mia Goth? I can't, I can't tell. It just so what's the, uh, what poster did they choose for it? Yeah, that's a new one. Yeah, new one. Um, Bones and All. Re- review coming soon. Good fucking movie. 
Um, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Never seen it. Pretty decent movie. Yeah, for like a bigger movie, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. good. And um, OG Scream. Nice. But is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo the original Dutch film, or is it the American remake? Ooh, there you go. Uh, this, uh, this isn't, uh... Because she likes the American remake yeah. of Suspiria, so... A, I mean, I think both are good. It's a 2011... Yeah, David Fincher. Yeah, that's the American. I mean, both are yeah. fine. Though. I heard the, I heard David, David Fincher, Fincher was very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Both, both are good. Both yeah. are um, she wrote, uh, Mike Flanagan probably watches this while excitedly punching the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did. Man, she's right. a patron. Oh. Oh, yeah. That means she can choose her own posters for all the movies. Oh. They give you alt posters when you, mm. give, them, when you give them your patronage. Yeah, like that's if TV. anyone fucking cares. That's what I said, too. Wow. Like, it's like... T- three times the price too or something like that yeah. as, as just being a pro member yeah um Aiden Nolan Berg in parentheses favorite movie is Lord of the Rings The Iron Claw which Lord of the Rings uh Fellowship okay which is a weird choice people usually pick Return of the King as their favorite I think Fellowship's the best one I, I don't consider them separate movies yeah yeah I mean I every year I watch them in one sitting anyways so yeah. they've, they've blended together now even though I think Fellowship might be the weakest I like the second. The second was good. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. I just like Sour Man, though. I think fucking Christopher right. Lee is just too cool. So the more Christopher Lee you get, the better the yeah, flick is. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with that. Yeah, and really kind of the whole thing. I think maybe the first one's more like, you know, true to the book, maybe. Or true to the... Well, if it was true to the book, there'd be an hour-long bit with Tom Bombadil where nothing happens. Yeah, but I mean, to the, the <laughs> feel yeah. of it, you know, the feel. yeah. yeah. Uh, he also gave uh, Lake Mungo half a star. He says, "Ha ha 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 ha!" Horror. Give me a fucking break. The genre has been around since the dawn of cinema, and there's like a dozen good movies. What an embarrassing genre, and what an embarrassing fucking film. Scariest movie I've ever seen. Give me a fucking break. This guy wants... He really wants a break. This guy's just too cool for school, yeah. dude. Nothing can get this guy. Casper, italicized, is scarier than this. This is the cinematic equivalent of doing an I Spy book for 80 minutes, and why the fuck would anyone want to do that? That being said, I would rather do that than watch this again. Another shit entry in the worst genre of film. What I a think fucking this guy, loser, bro. I think he's a little scaredy cat. He's a scary well, what's his favorite genre? I mean, based on his four favorites, I would guess drama. Which ones do you have? Lord of the Rings, The Iron Claw, oh, okay, The Departed, yeah. and Social Network. The Departed. No, I think this guy has shit yeah. taste. I mean, if you yeah. have The Departed in your top four on Letterboxd, yeah. you're a fucking loser. Because also, it's a, it's a, the Infernal Affairs is way better. The Social Network, too. I don't think that movie's I mean, that yeah. fucking good. I think it's good, but it's just good. That's all it is. Yeah. It's like a fucking watch the movie. It's an average, yeah. good, yeah. well-made yeah. movie. I mean, he recently gave Mission Impossible four and a half stars. Okay, so. I felt like I'd fucked off. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll comment. Suck my ass, uh. <laughs> uh, last one, another half star, by Ben One One Three. Favorite movies: Pearl, Hereditary, Gone Girl, and Poor Things. Even then, a little too recent. That's a good lineup. Mm-hmm. I don't know, dude. It's good lineup, but like I feel it was good these days, man. Yeah, but even then, you gotta have one you like from fucking. I don't know. You gotta, you, gotta have, you gotta have a wizard pick. Yeah, maybe the updates. Yeah. You, like, uh, my wizard pick is fucking The Mirror by Andre Tarkovsky. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. a good one, though. That that's a fucking, really yeah. Good. That's a yeah, I think one. mine's probably Videodrome, I guess. Mind you, I've spirited away on The Mirror on both on my uh, both on my top four. Yeah, I think we have to like, Oh, like, and Shaun of the, the Dead I have on my top four. That's fucking good, though. I think we should do our own, like, top fives. We'll do a video of that, for sure. So Ben... Tier list coming soon. So Ben says, don't even know uh, what they were trying to do with this one. A complete bore that had absolutely no elements of horror or suspense. This guy watched it on mute with his eyes. Yeah, it was pretty suspenseful. It was pretty atmospheric. The acting was unbearable. It's a dock. At times. The story was so bad, and it felt about five hours long. I think it was fast. It went fast. It's it's an hour 40. It's hour 20 something, no? I think think it's 80 minutes. I think it's an hour and. uh, Yeah, it's a tight movie, fuck. Yeah, it's really tight. I think so too, dude, because it finished and I was like, damn, dude. Mm -hmm. It's it's, it's almost 90 minutes. It's a tight hour and a half. Yeah. And when it finished, I was like, dude. I was spooked, dude. I was spooked all. Yeah. Yeah, Sitting in my car. It's a well paced movie, too. It's not like a badly paced movie. Oh, it was fun. It felt like a doc. It felt like a documentary. Yeah. Okay, fucking loser. So what do you guys give it? Yeah, these, these guys. So it's tough. tough. It's tough, man, because my expectations were high. Because I've seen mm-hmm. it on a lot of lists. 
praised as one of really, the okay. scariest, top ten scariest movies of all time. But not based on scary, based on quality, what do you think? I think it's a seven out of ten. Oh, yeah. On the monolith ranking system, seven out of ten. So that, that's a pretty good movie. That's a good score. I mean, that's surprising. I thought you were going to give it higher. I was higher, expecting yeah. higher for you. Because yeah. no, I, 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 yeah. Mind you, everyone, a seven is still a good score. Seven's much better than seven average. for me is a great movie. Yeah. Mm. Six is good. Mm. Five is average. Yeah. Eight is amazing. Mm. Nine is contender. For yeah, and then top ten, ten is either a personal touch or it's perfect. Yeah. Ten is any of the sixty-seven Herzog movies. <laughs> any one of them. That's but I, yeah, I think it's a great movie. I give it a seven. I I can't. I don't think I give it more because. Um, Despite you, you do de- do you you want to do decimal or is it straight seven? Straight seven. If it, if I'm given decimal, I think I'm going lower. Oh really? Yeah, because I I have like six point nine. Uh, I have no interest in watching it again. Really, I'm gonna watch it again. Tomorrow. I watch it again. I, watch yeah, it again. I don't know, dude. Dad. Really? It was, I think it was really good. It was really mm-hmm. good. It's great. Yeah. But I don't think it was anything more than that. It's a good score. Dave Portnoy would say it's a good score. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. be twisted twice though, too. You can't have that same feeling. Yeah, of the, oh, true. You can't get that twice. True. For me, I think the rewatch value is in the, the discovery. Yeah. In the images, yeah. Yeah. Well, you. Me, I'm thinking it was one of the. I mean, it's like you watch a horror movie and you're like, you're not really scared. You're not actually like yeah. spooked yeah. out or like a gore movie. Yeah. You're going, ooh, it's gross. You yeah. Know? You're not actually freaked out. This the first 15, 20 fucking minutes. I was genuinely. You didn't get freaked, freaked out by the out. zoom at the end. Of the, of the ghost? Yeah, I mean, but after that, it was like I'd been desensitized maybe by yeah. no, that an hour or well. something. Yeah. But that first 20-something, I was going, yeah. oh, what's going to happen? You know, I'm sitting in the dark all alone watching this outside. <laughs> it was scary, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was spooked out. So I, I'm going to give it uh, give it an eight, eight, eight and a half, I'd say, something mm-hmm. like that. I mean, I, you don't get scared, normally. Yeah. Actually scared. Yeah. I was yeah. actually creeped. Thing. Like not yeah. not not jump scared. You're like actually yeah, scared. The yeah, the atmosphere afraid. Yeah. Had me uncomfortable in the first yeah. twenty minutes. I give it an eight. Eight. I give it an eight point two. Oh, 8. 2. getting 8. specific. 2. A new number. Very interesting. New number value. Value. Yeah, it's still a, mo- a monster score. Oh yeah. That's a fucking great movie. Yeah. You know, like eight point two in my opinion. This is a must watch horror movie. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, Nick, I think you're right. The, mm. the, the, compared to other movies, like, especially when you're uh, a fan of the genre like we are, mm. I guess this movie really is top ten scariest movies of all time. Yeah. Even if it's not super scary to yeah, us. Yeah, because it, like, it, it, well, it, it takes a lot for us to even exactly. be slightly scared. Exactly. Mm. And I was... I don't want to say I was scared, because I wasn't scared, but I was... You know, for a second or two, I was pretty yeah. spooked out. Dante you know? doesn't get scared. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is, it's, the, it's like the... Uh, so for a horror movie to actually, like... Yeah. Z- you know, do that to us a little bit, it's kind of like, says something, yes. you know? Yes. The delivery method of it, too. Because, you know, what's, what's another infinitely scary fucking movie? Fucking Insidious? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Peanut. That's, that's just, like, a laugh factor. Yeah, yeah, same. Any, any movie like movies. that, though, you're watching it and you're going, I'm watching a movie. Yeah, this yeah. feels like a, a documentary. And you're feeling like but even like like some people would be like, "Oh, Serbian film is like the most fucked up movie ever." We're just like unfazed by that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I could watch that on a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It doesn't fade me in the slightest. Yeah. You know, this was a physical reaction. I was feeling. Yeah, like, I, I had a, uh, I had an anxiety. Yeah, exactly. Anxiety, to it, you unrest, know, if you go, oh, for what's it. going on? And like, 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 Hereditary doesn't didn't do that to me at all. Hereditary is cool though. You're watching it and going, this right. is cool, yeah. man. No, yeah. Hereditary yeah. is like debatably a, a like a like a nine, ten yeah. out of ten horror movie. Yeah. Like it's an S tier. Yeah. But it is less scary. Less scary. It's less scary. Less like, physical I don't, reaction. I don't get that anxiety that I did yeah. with this fucking yeah. movie. You this, know? the opening was so spooky, dude. I was, oh, I didn't like it, or I, I liked it, but I didn't yeah. like it. Oh, I was freaked out by it. This was well done. Like, this is a movie where, like, after I watched it, I was sleeping, and I got up to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Normally, I just go in the dark, whatever. This one, I, I like, I looked myself in the mirror, and then I couldn't <laughs> lie down. And then I, I took a pit. Yeah. Like, you know, this one, frat, frat happened to me is, like... Mm-hmm. Movie's gotta be like for a normal person. Yeah, they're gonna shit the pants. Yeah, uh, have you guys seen yeah. Creep? I have. That's another good found mm. footage movie where it's not it's not scary, but as the name suggests, it is fucking creepy. It's, it's creepy. Very it's creepy, like yeah. uncanny. It's oh yeah, unsettling. it's super creepy. Yeah. 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 That that's a good one too. Yeah, creep. I like creepy. It's one of my brother's favorite horror movies. Oh really? Yeah. Have you guys seen Speak No Evil? No. They're doing an American remake. 
Oh, fuck off. I think it's like a sh- I think they're just pulling the funny games on us. Okay. I don't know if it's the same director, but it seems to be a shot for shot. Like Mike, uh, okay. Mike, Michael Haneke? Yeah. Okay, shit. But mm. speaking of evil, I think it's a I think it's a Dutch movie originally. Um, that movie, again, not scary in the traditional sense. Because, you know, I think the traditional sense we're talking about is people getting spooked out, being like, oh, you know? Or like a slasher. Or yeah. Or yeah. The, house, you you, you know, finish your movie, movie, you go check if your front door is locked. Yeah, yeah. kind of thing, yeah. But Speak No Evil is scary in the, in the, like, it's so twisted. Not in a gory way, not mm. in a fucked up psycho killer way, but in, like, a, just a genuine, like, shit you hear on the news and you're like, how is that, how can any human even be capable of doing okay, that? Yeah. Twisted. Okay, yeah. And, like, not, like, it freaked out. not murder E, yeah. but, like, like, people who kidnap babies and raise them in their basement for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Like, that's scarier to me than the, a slasher. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The fact that someone can actually do that. Mm-hmm. Like, that kind of scary, yeah. that kind of fear. Yeah. That actually happened, by the way. How it happens, yeah, it's happened. Well, there's a famous uh, case, uh, his name is Joseph Fritzl. Yeah. He had, like, he had this daughter, right, in, like, the 70s or whatever, 80s. And uh, one day his daughter, like, went missing, quote-unquote, like, ran away from home. And they, he, would, he would doctor these letters that would be sent home from the daughter. And he would doctor, like... Oh, he raised his own daughter in the basement? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but then cool. would have sex with his daughter yeah, and, course. like, yeah. do all that. And, <laughs> and, and, like, no, good. I mean, you're raising daughter. your daughter. And, 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 and for, like, 15, 20 years, that yeah. daughter was raising a whole family with kids that never seen sunlight. Mm. And they, like, got found out because, like, one of the kids got, like, severely injured and yeah. had to go to the hospital. Didn't they make a movie about that with Brie Larson? The this room? is, like, recent. In Austria. I don't know if it's that, that recent. Because I thought it was coming out, no? Huh? Oh, yeah, I thought it was, like... 20 something years now no. the, the movie I'm talking about has been what The Room with Brie Larson mm-hmm. I don't think I don't so. know if that's based on this though. No. I know the guy you're I guess it's based about, on the though. same just this type, yeah. type of kidnapping yeah, yeah. so what do you yeah. guys think would you fuck your daughter if you had her in the basement <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no I can't say I would yeah. what a son <laughs> well yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't say that. Doesn't say that. <laughs> All right, well, that was a good podcast, guys. That was good. Yeah. What do we got? Uh, 7.75? Yeah, 7.5. Yeah, something like something that. Like yeah, that. Something like almost that. an 8. Yeah, almost an 8. Thank you for watching and listening to the Model Film Podcast. Watch out for merch. Subscribe, follow, new everything. Merch. Hit that teaser. notification. The new merch. Whatever the new fuck. Merch teaser. That, no, that's old merch, actually. Yeah, old never merch. Released it, so it's never, never, never released. Never released. I'm wearing and shorts for the first time ever on the podcast. Yeah, I'll check us out, out. Like, share. I'll crop them. Whatever. Yeah. Please please interact, Blair. and we'll have a, we'll have a merch <laughs> drop soon. Uh, and if you have anything else to review, put it in the comments below. Peace.